all right guys so i've just ordered my thunderstorm generator from plasmoid power so i wasn't really sure what to expect i actually went ahead uh prior prior to ordering it and um making up my bubbler and uv light canister for ionizing and i didn't actually realize that the kit apparently has all of that included so i was pretty happy about that and i can use my bubbler and the other one for another version i suppose so let's have a look inside this box and see what you get so i haven't i haven't opened this yet so this is how it comes and play some with power this is buddy yeah buddy so we've got a heat shield box there everything's wrapped up in bubble wrap the thunderstorm generator thank you Malcolm for your effort and uh, 10 years of isolation on an island just to um, yeah bring this to the world which is um, very much appreciated. So long overdue, and uh, like you said, even Tesla had to beg for money, which is um, one of his downfalls. Which is where Malcolm triumphs, I suppose. Um, okay, so we've got the thunderstorm generator. It's all wrapped up. We've got the bubbler. like a water filter canister and they've done all the hard work for you they got the aeration stone in there 20 mil fittings and you put a valve on there I suppose if you wanted to later you got the steel pads and not a bad looking little unit the heat shield, it's a bit of aluminium plate. And here we have the ionizer unit, which is the light bulb, the UV light. So it's another water filter, which is non-transparent. So they've built, drilled an additional two holes for air intake and there's a note in the instructions that the light bulb is inside this just for safe key so I was quite interested to see what type of bulb this is whether it is a black light bulb similar to the Bunnings one or other and looking at it it is a different type of bulb from which I thought I actually went and bought purple looking bulb so this is a, a reptile bulb it puts out a UV B150 spectrum of light so it's a little bit surprising I thought it would have been one of those traditional black light bulbs that you see so we can put this into the fitting and it looks like a bulb that you could source online So another 20 mil fitting there. So quite a confined space in there. There's not a lot of room to move. It's got a good seal. We've got four air intakes. 
I'll have to get an adapter for Australia, which is okay. And here we have the reptile packaging. So they're not hiding any secrets here, guys. It's all very open and encouraging us to replicate it at our own means and so here we have the exhaust page so a little bit of, they've even included a manifold seal so it's a high temperature sealant Stainless steel, 304 stainless. So they say that the section that goes into the exhaust should be as close as possible. So I would say that this would be the exhaust side, or maybe just this one. There she is. So you can actually see the, the ball inside the second sphere. The ratios are four to three to two. They appear to be symmetrical. So I'm not sure if you can have it either way. We'll soon find out. It looks like you can. They look like two symmetrical balls. Pretty good welding. Bit of niggle tig where the welding there. So these actually look like Three quarter inch, one inch, one metric here in Australia, so just force a habit using millimeters. So here we have our Venturi carburetor retrofit, and they've included some extension hoses for the fuel line, and this is probably an airline or it could be another fuel line, depending on size of the fuel line on your carburetor system. So it looks like all copper and it's just a angled cut on a copper pipe. It looks like a 45 degree cut. And they've included the gaskets. Okay, so this is an extension arm with a little grub screw and stop there. And, uh, okay, so this fits onto here, I'd say. So maybe there's an olive that goes in there, compresses that pipe the Venturi. We have the exhaust flange laid out a bit neater here. The thunderstorm generator. Okay, so this looks
looks like a braided hose that goes between the ionizer and the bubbler. So that's not going to kink, not in a million years. So we've probably got a half inch size hole in there. We've got three quarter inch fittings. And in most cases, they are to make room for the thunderstorm generator, you have to lift your petrol tank. So they've actually included the threaded rod to actually lift that up and hold that above your generator frame. And here we have the copper fittings. going to obviously compress these copper fittings onto these and elsewhere. I have some nylon, uh, some copper olives. All right. They've actually included the, the olives in there, the compression olives. So very nice little kit. Um, I was, I thought it was a little bit expensive, as I only thought before getting this. But the amount of time that it would take to collect all this stuff and put it all together, it would easily take, take me a week, easily. So, um, you know, a week's wages in Australia, you know, nothing short of a grand there. So the whole unit cost me uh, duties and GST through customs was an extra $314. The unit cost me about $1,400, just with a dollar, dollar changeover at the time. So about $1,750 all up. So you take a thousand dollars off the sourcing and labor for all of this I only paid 750 bucks in my eyes for the thunderstorm generator which would probably take me six months to make I'd probably I'd have to buy about two grand's worth of gear it's a absolute bargain in my eyes all right Thanks guys, thanks Kevin. Thank you to Kevin Baker. Um, I know he's a man who probably is wearing many hats at the moment and answering a lot of questions. And he did a great job of explaining everything and giving me support when he had time. So thank you.